Can we really use the cage system to decode the greatest guitar player of all time? It goes without saying that Jimi Hendrix was one of the ultimate guitar innovators. From his unorthodox playing style, to manipulating sound with pedals and feedback, to his astonishing live performances. But one aspect of his playing that tends to get slightly less attention is his incredible rhythm playing. Now, most of that magic that made Hendrix Hendrix is unattainable to us mere mortals, but his rhythm playing was very much rooted in triads, and triads are the fundamental building blocks of the caged system. So today I'm gonna show you a few of Hendrix's most iconic rhythm moves through the lens of the caged system. And by doing this, you'll have a much better understanding of why the caged system is actually helpful. You'll connect some dots and those cage shapes up and down the neck, and hopefully inject some of that magical Hendrix mojo into your own play. So first, what is the cage system? It's just a way to visualize the fretboard using the five common open chord shapes, C, A, G, E, and D. And you could think of these shapes as anchors that allow you to connect arpeggios and scales all up and down the fretboard. So for example, a C chord in C shape, a C chord in A shape, a C chord in G shape, a C chord in E shape, and finally in D shape. Now if we apply some Hendrix sounding riffs to those shapes, it would sound something like this. If none of that made any sense or you're just completely new to the cage system, there's a great video that you can check out here from Dr. Molly Miller, or you can check out the Cage Learning Pathway at Pickup Music. And before we dive into the exercises, I wanna give you five general tips that will help you sound more like Hendrix. Tip number one is use a Strat or some type of single coil guitar. Generally, for his rhythm playing, he played either in the neck position or the second position. Tip number two is to vary your strumming position. So if you play back here, you'll get a brighter sound, and if you play up here, you'll get a warmer sound. There's a lot of videos on YouTube where you can see Hendrix manipulating the sound in this way. Tip number three is keep your hands and your wrists nice and relaxed. He could really dig in when he needed to, but for his rhythm playing especially, a lot of times he had quite a light touch. Tip number four is optional, but try to use your thumb whenever possible. Now, what this allows you to do is access certain embellishments when you're playing, especially in an E shape, so. That type of move is just not possible to get the same exact sound if you just do a normal bar chord. Because you start to get that flat seven in there. Tip number five is forget about curving your fingers in this little classical sort of approach. He would often just kind of mash his fingers down against the fretboard and play with almost a flat fingered approach. So with all that out of the way, let's get started with the E shape. So we're gonna start with the E shape because it's the easiest to visualize, I think, with the cage system. And this was, of course, one of the classic moves in the intro to Little Wing. But what he would do with the thumb here is it allows him to grab all these little color notes, the ninth, the sixth, and the fourth to make it kind of a sus four type of sound. Now in this example, the backing track goes from G to B flat and C. And that's just a nice way for us to try these different embellishments in different positions of the neck. For this example, we're drawing inspiration from the classic Wait Until Tomorrow, which sounds a little like this. But our example, we're gonna start with more of a riff, and that'll place us firmly in the A-shape territory. And here it is, that E chord using the A-shape. But then we slide into a riff that kind of takes us into the next shape. So this is a great example of how Hendrix would be combining shapes and sliding from one to the next. 
And now if I'm still thinking of the, the E chord, I'm now in the G shape of the E chord. And you'll see that this triad, it serves as almost like an equator, if you will, that equally divides the two, or almost equally. Or. Now the second part, we add this little. And all we're doing there is going from an E to quickly hinting at an A triad. And that triad happens to land in the C shape of that A chord. So we're really just playing two chords, the E chord, then just hinting at the A chord. And then we move that down a whole step and do the same thing. Now we start out with just this classic Hendrix move where he plays a power chord, but he adds the fifth and the bass. Now that's not G shape. If we had to call that anything, I would say that that's an A shape. But where we get into the G shape is when he plays the next part. So that's. And we can visualize that by grabbing our G shape E flat chord here to an E to an F. Of course, he's not playing the root. He's just hammering on into the third, so. But it comes from that root. So we're drawing inspiration from a small part of a riff that he plays in Castles Made of Sand. So this is an A major chord sliding into the third. Visualizing that C shape there. And then adding this beautiful little hammer on pull off thing. So we're actually coloring it with a major nine and then also the major seventh as well. And then what's really cool too is he actually outlines the add nine here, down here, the, the lower octave of the ninth. So we get this sort of sound. So all together it sounds like this. And then in the track, it goes down and just does the same thing on an E major seven as well. Now we've arrived at the D shape and admittedly this is a hard one to justify. I don't think a lot of people think of the D shape. It's more of, you're more referencing the shape before it. So in this case, we've got an A chord. We're sliding up. And now, technically, we would be in the D-shaped territory. But we don't actually visualize that shape until up here. So, all the riffs and everything that I was playing, that's all kind of, you know, I'm still just thinking of it as A major. Um, we do hit this up here, and this is a really cool thing that he plays. Which, if you do visualize that D shape, it is right there. Now we're calling this an iconic outlier because it doesn't necessarily fit into one cage shape or the other, but we can still take a look at it through the lens of the cage system. So we have a dominant seven sharp nine type of sound. <laughs> Hendrix used this on Foxy Lady and Purple Haze and a couple other songs. Uh, this is also known as the Hendrix chord, right? We take a look at those first two notes, 
we've got the root and third, which would lead us to believe that maybe we're heading in C-shaped direction. But instead, we grab the flat seventh there, and then the sharp nine. And that puts us somewhere between the C shape and the A shape. So can we decode Hendrix with the cage system? Yes, in one sense, his triadic approach definitely lends itself to visualizing the cage system. Now, was Hendrix thinking of the cage system? Well, no. It didn't become a method of teaching guitar until after he passed away. But I would argue that he was thinking in the spirit of caged. And this is good news for us because again, it's a way for us to try to analyze, try to decode, try to reverse engineer, however you want to put it. And in that sense, it's also where the cage system falls short. Decoding his playing with caged is just one piece of the musical puzzle that made Hendrix so compelling. Now, many great players, Stevie Ray Vaughan, John Mayer, Matteo Sasatu, have decoded Hendrix in their own way. And that is probably the most important part. You wanna study these riffs, figure out how they work, and then it's up to you to make them your own and create something new. If you'd like the tabs or the backing track, or if you just wanna dive deeper into Hendrix or the Cage system, grab your free 14-day trial at Pickup Music, and I'll see you inside. If you like this video, be sure to check out our other great lesson videos and killer backing tracks on the channel. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can be up to date on all of our new releases.